Mm. What a lovely queue we have here. So, well, as you guys can see, I obviously won't be able to stream the game today. So I figured, hey, let's go ahead and make a little bit of a guide for YouTube. Why not? Very spontaneous, very improvised. Uh, I'm just gonna jump into a game. I, uh, I played with Kutcher yesterday. And I'm gonna try to explain my thought process, my reasoning, um, and just try and teach you guys the game a little bit in general. I haven't watched this game yet. Uh, I only played it yesterday, so might go horrible. Anyways, let's jump into that. Okay. So, let's kick this up. Bomb. Okay, what do I get? So what is the best item you can go for in the first round? Is this a spatula? Uh, no. Spatula is no? the most Yoda one to get. Oh, sorry. Let me just fix one thing real fast. <laughs> Here we go. Okay. So, in the beginning of the round. Wait. Wait, wait, wait. Ba -ba -bum -ba -bum. I'll probably have someone cut this a little bit, so it's a little bit better than just being super improvised. Uh-uh. Bam. -uh. Okay, so in the very beginning, you see the carousel. What I tend to aim at... Uh, what I tend to aim for in the carousel, as I will be saying, uh, telling Kutcher in a moment, is to get a needlessly large rod, a giant spelt, a BF sword or a recursive bow. Those four items are very flexible and have very a lot of opportunities to be very good. And if I see that I can get one of them, I tend to go for a character that I may want to play, but mostly you just want to grab a unit that costs two with one of these items. So in this game, I picked Lucian. Payouts, but it cannot... In this game, I picked Lucian with the needlessly large rod because Lucian is one of uh, the strongest units, in my opinion, uh, that you can get in the beginning. And he has a needlessly large rod. As I mentioned earlier, a very good item. Uh, let me bring up a little bit of a tier list for you guys that I. Uh, cut together. Uh, this one is not updated after Lulu got fixed, but it's basically the same other than a couple of changes. So, the only couple of changes are like Akali is a little bit better, uh, Shogath is better, and uh, da -da 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 -da, I think that was pretty much it from the top of my head. Anyways, so here you can see what I tend to aim for in the beginning are Cassadin, uh, Lulu, Nidalee, Lucian. Those are like four of the main core units in the beginning that are extremely strong. And if you can get one of them a two star in the beginning of the game, you will have a very smooth sailing. But with that being said, in the very beginning of the game, you want to aim for two stars more than you want to aim for composition or good units. So in this game, as you will be able to see, let's speed it up a little bit just for your guys' viewing pleasure. I'm gonna speed this up a little bit. Oh, I think all of those items can be argued. Here we can see on the first roll. We pick up, oh uh, well, we see a double vein, a Nidalee, a Garen, and a Cossex. So the obvious pickup here for me, uh, I, I don't know if I'm actually going to pick this up, but the pickup that I would make almost 100%. Oh, wait, camera, hello. Hi. The pickup that I personally would make here would be the double vein because they're both noble. And there's two of them. There's also the alternative of getting Garen and Vayne to get a 100% noble buff 
on round uh, four. But it's not going to be super strong, so you might still lose with that. There's also the alternative that you go for the Nidalee and the Cossacks, which is a little bit less conventional. Nidalee is a lot better unit than any of the other units here. But uh, we only have one of her and we don't have any other wild, but it's still early. So um, yeah, let's see what I pick. I, yeah, as I assumed, I would pick up the veins because as I mentioned, they are noble and noble is a very strong uh, unit combination in the very beginning. Uh, what else can we say? Well, in the early rounds, you don't have to decide what you want to go. You want to focus on getting the two stars. And if you get the two stars, let's take a look at the next row. Oh, I missed the... Oh, no. Wait. Let's go back. Just so I see that I'm actually playing like I would. So on this roll... This one is a little bit harder, in my opinion. As I mentioned in the tier list, one of the strongest units is Kassadin. And we have a Kassadin here, but Kassadin doesn't have any synergy here. What does have synergy, however, is the fact that we have a Lucian on the board, which is a Gunslinger. And there's also two Graves here, which would make very likely that we get a duplicate early game. Or a two-star, I mean, obviously. Uh, so my pickup here would probably be either the Double Graves and the Kassadin. I'm assuming that's what I will be picking up. Another alternative could be that you pick up the Kassadin, the Tristana, and the Warwick. Because Warwick is a better unit than Graves. Graves is only really a good unit if you want to use him for the Gunslinger bonus. Uh, there is a fringe build you can do with pirates, but pirates are very hard to pilot. It's not really a build I recommend people doing in the beginning at the least. Uh, but getting the gunslinger and then putting a red buff on him is really strong. Let's see. Indeed. I did indeed buy the double graves and the Kassadin like I thought I would. So, so far, this looks like a good game. I haven't looked through this, as I said. I just picked one game that I remembered was good. Uh, to show more that there are more than one build you can do. It's about being flexible. It's about changing your build on the go, depending on what you get. You should never go into a game with the mindset, I'm gonna play Wild Shapeshifter Dragon Sorcerer. Every game. Terrible mindset. You will not learn anything. And you will most likely lose a lot. Because if there is only one build that you can do. And one build you know how to do. Then if you don't get those units, what the fuck do you do? Instead, I recommend being flexible. As you see, right now I have two Graves, two Vayne, a Lucian and a Kassadin. Which opens me up... To getting a third vein for a two star, a third graves for a two star, uh, or Kassadin, which is a good unit. And here we see we got the uh, uh, Shane Vest, which is one part of the red buff that I was talking about for graves. Now we only need a giant spell. Another thing that people might make the mistake of doing is that you do not want to put down any items before all the minion rounds are over to truly get an overview and see what items you have and for that even i personally use a little bit of a cheat sheet this one is one that uh, a friend of mine named Sulagasang put together using some of skara's lists so there's like a lot of data here I believe he has a command in his stream chat where you can get to this list. Um, anyhow, so I have this little sheet sheet up when I'm, whenever I'm playing because there are a lot of item combinations. Some of them you might not want to use too frequently, so you might forget about them. Uh, most of them I've memorized by uh, heart now because I need them that often. Anyways, let's continue. So on this roll, 
we can see that we have our third graves, which is really good. And our second Lucian, which is a really good setup as well. That really tells us, hey, we can do this. Uh, and other than that, we have one gold over. So with that one extra gold, we can either pick up the Tristana, which is another gunslinger. Or we can pick up the K6, which is a void along with the Kassadin. But here we're coming up on the first PvP uh, round. So now we gotta get strong. Now we gotta think, what are we gonna do here? So, the items we have don't combine into too many great things, as we saw here on the uh, tier list, or the uh, cheat sheet. Uh, we have a vest, we have a Negatron cloak, and we have a tier. Okay, so the vest plus the tier, that's a frozen heart. It's a decent item. The vest plus the Negatron cloak is a disarming sword breaker, I think it's called. Personally, in my opinion, not a very good item. Uh, and we can also make the Hush, which is a decent item late game, doesn't do much in early game. And finally, uh, we have the uh, Needlessly Large Rod on Lucian, which can combine with any of these. So we could have made a uh, Locket, which is a really good item. I might have made that, I'm not sure. More likely, I probably made the Ludens, uh, because... Ludens is actually quite good on uh, Lucian, as crazy as it might sound. The second bullet from Lucian actually counts as magic damage, uh, and uh, it counts as a spell, so that bullet will proc Ludin. Let's see what we did. Uh, yeah, we picked up the uh, Graves, obviously, we picked up the Tristana, and we picked up the uh, uh, Lucian. Kind of like I figured. Then we're gonna put the Shane Vest on Graves, preparing for the red buff, as I mentioned. The Ludens on the uh, Lucian. And we're probably keeping the Vest. Or we might we might put the Negatron Cloak on Lucian, because Negatron Cloak plus BF Sword makes for a Bloodthirster, and a Bloodthirster is a very good item on Lucian as well. See if that is what we did. Oh, we keep it on the bank. Okay, okay. That's a solid play regardless, in my opinion. Uh, the reason I put my graves right here, by the way, is because many people build here. And if the enemies build here, then the graves will be tanking while also being able to shoot at at least two of the enemy's minions. Uh, which is very good, because graves is kind of weak, but he does have this cone attack, as you see. He's sniping Lulu right now, killing Lulu through the Warwick. Which is pretty fucking good, in my opinion. And, oh, here's another really good t uh, th tidbit. After a wave, you get one gold if you win. And here, we get that gold. And immediately, when we get that gold, you want to be spending that gold. To get something that might help you later. As I mentioned earlier, we had the choice between buying uh, Tristana or Cossacks. Now there's no choice anymore, because we won, we get that extra gold, so we can buy the Cossacks. Which I did after I sold the Darius a little bit uh, at the end there. And as you see, because we picked up that Cossacks, we had the opportunity in the next round to get two more Cossacks. This roll was really insane though, this roll made the game. We just got a Vein 2, a Lucian 2, and a Cossacks 2 immediately. That's four 2 stars on round PvP round 2-2. Two, two. That is extremely early, extremely good. It doesn't have to synergize, that's the thing. You have two stars in the beginning, it doesn't have to synergize. This is just straight up a fucking bomb. Uh, normally here, you have the choice. You can sell the Tristan. Well, you don't have to, because I know I'm strong enough that I'm actually going to win the round. And here, Kutcher starts mentioning that he's playing um, a uh, Sorcerer Garen, I think. We were making jokes uh, about... Um, 
a wizard, uh, Garen. You're a wizard, Garen. I'm a what? You're a wizard. And uh, yeah, ir irrelevant for the guide. Fuck that. Let's go back to the actual guide. Oh, and here we get another Kassadin, which is a great pickup. And another Cossix, which we already had on the board. Uh, so we are probably gonna pick up everything here. Because we have six gold from right now, and then one gold from winning this round. So we're gonna pick up everything, and we're probably gonna put Vayne in. As I said, always buy for all your gold. If you don't buy for all your gold, you're wasting possibilities and chances. As you see, this Cossacks is only possible because we got, um, we got that Cossacks to run before with the gold we got from the win. It's very important to keep your economy uh, going. Here you can see, let's slow this down to one time, just to see the power of the Graves. Graves will be tanking the entire enemies. He will also be splash attacking on two enemies, minimum. And yeah, he also, he's also giving us the Gunslinger bonus for the Lucian, which is very powerful. As you can see, this Lucian will probably 1v5 right now. Rocking the Ludens on the second hit. Dashing away. This Warwick even has the Noble buff, which is a very strong buff this early game, but Lucian still takes care of him. Okay, here we come to the first carousel. There are a couple of strategies for the first carousel. Either, as you see me doing in this game, you get an early level up, capitalize on a win streak to get more money than your opponents, which is uh, the go-to way for me personally. Or you go for the second strategy, which is that you stay on a low level, and if you lose, you lose, and therefore getting carousel priority. If you get the carousel priority, then you have your pick of what you want to get. Now, for me, as the uh, leader of the game, I will kind of have to take what I get. Now, what I see immediately here is the Elise with a giant's belt. The Elise with the Giant's Belt screams out, pick me, to me. Because I already have the Chain Vest on the Graves, and as I mentioned, a Graves with the uh, Chain Vest already will make a Red Buff Graves. Red Buff Graves is very powerful. It will be applying a 2.5 health burn per second to anyone hit by his auto attack, and his auto attack is this entire cone. Sadly, as we see here, the Elise got stolen. I'm sad in response. Then you gotta think, okay, now what do I want to get instead? What I tend to do if I'm first place is I go back to my map. I take a look at what I have. Now I know I have the uh, Negatron Cloak only and the Shake. <laughs> Sorry, and the Chain Vest. And Negatron Cloak and Chain Vest don't have too many great combinations. So what I can make here is I usually bring up my little bit of a cheat sheet. So look, I can grab another Negatron Cloak to get the uh, magic immunity, which is quite strong. I can pick up, uh, what else do we have? A tier. A tier would only work with the Shane Vest, and I don't want to waste the Shane Vest for that, because the Hush is not good enough in my opinion. I can also pick up the Needlessly Large Rod, which is just a good item in general. Not that it would actually work very well with the items I have right now. It's more of a thing for the future. And those are pretty much choices. So among these, I would probably go for the uh, Gangplank because of the Negatron Cloak or the Lulu because of the uh, uh, needlessly large rod. And an important thing is not to always go for the character, but for the item. Because characters you can get in the future, and items you can't really uh, necessarily what do you, account for or like expect to get in the future. There are, of course, exceptions, such as picking up the Nar or Aurelian Soul on the third carousel. 
or maybe a Svein or a Kale. If you if there's one unit that you need to make your comp work, then for God's sake, pick up the unit. But if there's no unit that you really want, then aim for the most expensive unit with the best item that you can get. So for here example, if you wanted the chain vest, you would not go for the Darius, you would go for the Volibear. Because the Volibear is worth 3 gold when you sell him to get the chain vest. And as I said, pick up the Lulu. Because needlessly large rod is just a good item in general. Now it just so happened that we got another Lulu. And Lulu is a very good character, so I don't actually mind having the Needlessly Large Rod on her. I'm gonna be keeping the Needlessly Large Rod, I think. <laughs> I'm assuming. As I said, I'm doing this live, I haven't looked at this game. I'm playing like I would play myself right now, in the now. Uh, I would probably go ahead and sell Elise Varus, because they're garbage. They're never gonna be used for this build. Uh, and buy the uh, Lulu, and probably, let's see here, sell Varus, sell Elise, sell Tristana, because you already have two Gunslinger, you're probably not going to go four of them, to buy Nidalee, because we have a Nidalee one, Ka6, and Lulu. There's also the possibility of leveling up already, which is also a very valid play to keep your win streak. If you keep your win streak, you keep getting more, more and more gold because of the win streak bonus. So if you are strong, keep being strong without risking your economy too much. And here we don't really have much of an economy. So I'm gonna most likely level up here. And put in the Lulu, because Lulu is a very good character, as you saw in my tier list here. Lulu is on the top tier. That has a reason. Lulu is ridiculously powerful. Do not mess with Lulu. Holy shit. And because we leveled up here, we're going to be able to buy the Cossacks and the Nidalee... Probably we're going to sell so we get the Lulu as well, because Lulu is a very good character, as I, meant, as I mentioned. It's very possible that we sell the Graves and the Tristana, or the Nidalee, as I did now. What else can I say? Um, currently, as you see, we have literally no combination, yet we are smacking everyone, due to the fact that we have... Very strong individual units. People tend to focus too much on just going for the combos in the beginning when combos are not really relevant this early. Unless there's a really good one such as Noble or you get an early Katarina or an early Draven or something for the Imperial bonus then you can consider it. But there aren't very many that you really want to get this early. Not even the Sorcerer. And Sorcerer is one of the strongest goddamn units in the game. Or combos, I guess you can call it. Did I do a reroll there? Wait, sorry. I, I gotta... It's very seldom that you actually do rerolls this early. But I think I might actually consider doing a reroll here just to get that extra power to not risk the win streak right now. And I think I do it. Do I do it? I do. Okay. That gives me the Lulu 2. And now I cannot lose. Now it's literally impossible for me to lose. Or as I said myself. Hi. Okay, I guess I said hi. <laughs> uh, here we see an enemy that has made Sword of the Divine on Vayne. In my opinion, Sword of the Divine is not an item you ever want to be making. Because 
there is an item called Phantom Dancer. And if you have Sword of the Divine versus Phantom Dancer, you cannot win. Hmm, so this roll doesn't give us anything, which is a bit of a shame. So we are probably just going to go ahead and aim for income at this point. Here I told Kutcher that he can make a Beyblade out of his uh, Garen, I think. No, wait, that's uh, Splatterman. When we're looking at Splatters. Okay. Now it's important to fix my income. So I want to go up to 10 gold in order to get one extra gold at the end of the turn, which is... It might not sound like a lot, but in auto battler games, you always get one extra gold for each 10 gold you have at the end of the turn. And this is very important. Very. It's like probably the most important thing. Uh, to manage your income very well. And here we see Nar. Nar being most likely the best character in the game right now. I am very happy to see that Nar. That Nar is going to be able to just allow me to wreck my opponents, basically. This game, I th think I was being very greedy because I'm re rolling way more than I should. But I really don't want to lose my win streak. If I lose my win streak, I lose out on a lot of gold. So a couple of gold to re-roll to keep the win streak is, in my opinion, totally okay. So if we don't if we win this round, we don't have to sell anything. As I said, we will get one gold from the round ending. That will bring us up to 10 gold. But if we lose this round, we have to sell something. So always be prepared to sell something in order to get 10 gold. Obviously, you don't want to sell anything that you will be using in a soon future. But you do want to be selling something here in order to um, get the 10 gold. Um, let's skip ahead a little bit. Because I think you guys are starting to get the basics. Like... Pick up the good units over the combo units in early game. Um, if you cannot get to 10 gold, or like the closest 10, then go ahead and buy... Well, first, look if you can sell any units that you won't ever be using in order to get to that next gold. Then, if that's not possible, then go ahead and uh, buy every unit in the bank. Because if you buy units... Obviously, don't you don't want to buy units so that you go down at uh, an income, uh, what's it called? Income level, I guess. So if you have 17 gold, buy things for 7 gold in the shop. So you go down to 10 gold, if you can. Then by buying those things, you have more possibility in the next round to maybe make a 2-star out of those things. Or you have the possibility to just take them out of the bank. Because the way that auto chess works is, say, here's the pool. There's a pool of units that everyone will be siphoning into. And every time someone buys a unit from the pool, that unit is gone. There's only, let's say, 15 left of that unit in the pool. If you take out two of those units, buying them, then you take away those units from your opponents, but you also make it so that you yourself won't get the same two units in the next reroll. Or like the free refresh you get at the end of the turn. So that point is very important. And then, let's see here. Thirdly, just because you can combine an item doesn't mean you should. You should look at your opportunities to see what can I make with these units what like what possibilities do I have? Uh, these items, obviously. What possibilities do I have with these? And uh, yeah, with those simple uh, tips and tricks, I think uh, you guys will shape up to be good players. Given a couple of practice games, just a 
watching some people play the game or playing a couple of games yourself when the, you can actually get in because i'm assuming much like myself that you guys are still stuck in the queue <laughs> um let's see here any other quick advices i don't i don't think so hmm I think that's good. Let's skip ahead a little bit to see what has happened. On our board right now, we have a very solid team. Let's just end the round real fast so I can show what we have. And as you see here, I sold a unit to get to 20 gold. Very important. Keep an eye on your gold at all times. Maximum gold... Uh, income is 50 but usually if you're losing a lot of health you don't want to be on 50 gold you want to go down to like 30 gold try and get a better team that kind of stuff so in this role we see three warwicks which is always a nice sign we also see that we're two away from leveling up don't be afraid to level up if it doesn't cost you much so here i'm gonna go ahead and level up and i'm most likely gonna slot in the warwick two that we got from this role I just want to see if I'm doing that, or if I'm doing something dumb. Yeah, level up and Gnar. Yeah, Gnar is also legit. But then, let's see here. We have a Gnar and a Warwick, which are both wilds. So let's go ahead and improvise here, dropping out the... Either the Cossacks or the Vein, because neither of those provide any buff, and they're not especially strong units in of themselves. You put in the Warwick, which is a stronger unit than both those two, in my opinion, uh, giving also the wild buff to Nar and himself. That's probably what I would do in hindsight. I'm not sure if I actually do it now, because it's... Yeah, it's not a... It's not a super obvious play. You gotta look at what you have at all times. Look what you have, look at your money, look at your units, look at your items. This is a game about information, adapting, and knowledge, which is why I really like this game. Because the, the more experience you have in it, the better you are and more solid plays you can make. And this is the first round we lose, sadly. The win streak is gone. Whop, whop. Let's go ahead and jump a little bit ahead in the game. To see what we end up on. Oh, see, did I see? Did I skip two? No, we're still in the same game. I still don't have a single buff. This is awkward. Normally, you want to have buffs. But as you can see, it's going quite well because I have such strong units. Let's see what we have on the board. Currently, we have a Cossacks 3, we have a Nar 2, Nar 2 is fucking huge, can literally be put into any team comp and be really strong. We have a Lulu 2, which is also really strong, we have the Gunslinger buff, that's the only buff we have, and we have the Vein, which I, as I said, in hindsight, would not actually have on the board. I would much rather have this Kassadin, because Kassadin is super strong. I think we are, yeah, we are on the round that I would definitely level up on. I probably would have leveled up earlier, but on this round, for sure, level up, uh, add in Kassadin. And then I might even look for a Void bonus here, because I already have Kassadin and Cossacks in that case, so I only need to get rid of Vayne to get in one more Void unit and uh, get the uh, Void bonus. Do I actually do? I don't level up here? No. Yeah, sure. I was about to say, like, what the fuck am I doing? <laughs> so now we're getting close to some bonuses. We are one away from Void. Which is a pretty good buff at this point in the game. It uh, gives you 50% armor penetration. We're also one away from Noble, but Noble is not really relevant at this point. Noble is a buff you only want to go for if you want to go all the way, like six nobles. 
the three noble buff is only good the first couple of rounds. Then it becomes complete garbage. Uh, Sorcerer is definitely something we're going to want to aim for here. Sorcerer is one of the strongest buff because everything in the game that has an ability is spell damage in this game. Unlike in Dota Odishas, where some is physical, some is true damage, some is uh, magical. So here, the Sorcerer bonus gives you just a straight up buff on all your units. So here, the obvious play is just to remove the vein for the Aurelian Salt, giving us the Sorcerer bonus. Uh, and that's just gonna make us a lot stronger. And the Vayne, we don't really need. Vayne is kinda an iffy unit right now. So we're gonna go ahead and sell her. We're probably gonna not take the Tristana either, because Tristana is also kinda awkward. Anyways, let's go ahead and skip towards the end of this game. Let's take a look. Here we see that the build has evolved a little bit. We are sitting on a Aurelion Soul 2, but other than that, it's pretty much exactly the same as when we left it. What have we gotten to, uh, before then? Well, we're ahead, so we can start picking up good units to have in the future. We don't have to spend all our money rerolling for these units. We can think ahead, what do I want to do? And what I decided to do was start building the Katarina and the Draven, because I got a lot of them. Katarina and Draven goes quite well together, because both of them are Imperial, and both of them are very heavy damage dealers. And currently, we have very good CC in the form of Gnar, so they can just, and Lulu as well, so they can just wreak havoc from the backline, or from behind all the units. Anyways, needless to say, we got a really solid comp. We uh, ended up winning this game, I believe, quite easily. And I think this game is a great example of improvisation rather than a game where you have a set mindset. Like, going only for the wild bonus, the sorcerer bonus, the dragon bonus, like that kind of stuff that many people do. They just pick one thing and they go for it in the beginning. I think that's a very bad mentality to have. It's it's fine in the beginning, of course. You want to try out the builds, you want to try out um, all the kind of combinations you can make. But I would definitely recommend to look up which uh, builds that are currently good. I actually have a command in my chat here, I believe. Oh, someone actually just used the meta command. <laughs> so, the Wild Shape Sorcerer Dragon. As you can see, I put this as the strongest build currently in the game. It is completely insane. Uh, to get this build, you use Gnar, which is the best unit in the game. Aurelian Soul, which is the probably the second best unit in the game. And Lulu, which is probably the third best unit in the game. And obviously, if you put all three of those together with a really good core, you're gonna have a fucking amazing team. It's also using Nidalee. Can be swapped into Swain late game. It uses... I, I've experimented a lot with Morgana as of late, as the third mage. Uh, because she does a lot of damage in conjunction with the uh, Nar, because Nar knocks them back into Morgana. Morgana does the AoE on everyone. She kills everything. So yeah, this is a very strong build. But with this being a very strong build, it's highly contested. So sometimes you might not get the stuff you need for it. So let's go into the second one, which is Glacial Guardian Ranger. So this command is not really updated yet. They did nerf Glacial yesterday, or two days ago. But it's still a very solid build, because Sejuani is a very strong unit, and Glacial as a whole gives your team the AoE, CC, and just Perma CC that is really good. Both Glacial build and Noble build are very solid builds, but the thing about those two builds is they're very hard to accomplish, unlike this one. 
because this one requires six specific units, which are, uh, both of them have one that is a five star, and getting the uh, uh, Anivia or getting the Kale can be very difficult sometimes. So they're kind of YOLO to go full into, but the rewards are great when you get there. A little bit the same with the Wild Shape Sork Dragon, but the thing is this build is much more flexible. If you don't get any wild, okay, then you skip the wild, you go into sorcerers, like six sorcerers you can even do. Oh, you don't get the dragon, well, fuck the dragon, go uh, full shapeshifter. They're, this build is very flexible. These builds are not very flexible, but they're still very strong builds. Then there's also the assassin build, very popular, with using six assassins. I personally like to use five assassins and an item, the spatula plus the bee of sword, which turns one of your units into an assassin. Namely, such as turning your draven into an assassin, having that motherfucker crit for about 3,000, while also having a Katarina on the board, giving you the Imperial bonus. And, uh, yeah, then there are a couple of uh, other builds, such as the Yordle comp, that is definitely a legit comp to go, but the Yordles suffer from having three very good units and three complete garbage tier units. They have Lulu, Nar, and... Uh... Oh shit, is it Vagar? That's the reason, I guess. Oh yeah, they have Lulu, Nar, and that are really good. As you can see, they're on the top of the list. Then they have Vagar, <laughs> Vagar <laughs> and Kennen. Which are acceptable. They're pretty good. Both of them are acceptable. Vagar is only good because of the fact that he's a Yordle and a Sorcerer, though. Exactly like Lulu, which makes them very easy to combine with Vagar, Lulu, Aurelian Soul. Which is why he's in B tier, in my opinion. Kennen is, on the other hand, an Elementalist, which also makes him quite a good unit. But he also has a nice amount of damage. And he's a Yordle. Then we have Tristana, which is kind of... She's okay if you run Gunslinger, but if without Gunslinger, she just falls short. Uh, then we have Poppy. Holy shit, what a garbage unit. And yeah, but Yordles are definitely acceptable. They're a good unit in general. Then... Other things to mention, as I said earlier... Uh, well, oh no, before then, there's also the Imperial buff, but the Imperial buff is not really something you go full on out for from the get-go. The Imperial buff is more something you transition into in a late game in case you get a lot of Dravens, you get a lot of Katarinas, you get a lot of Swains, you have a three-star Darius or even a two-star. But it's not something you can go for in the beginning because... Darius is a 1 star, then Katarina is a 3, Draven is a 4, and Swain's a 5. Not any units you can get in an early game. And the last one I want to talk about is Pirates. Pirates are a build you can do. They are mediocre at best. If you have a very solid opening, like you get a Gangplank 2, you get a Pike 2, a Graves 2, and then maybe finish that up with a Lucian. And, uh, or you can go the Assassin route as well. But you have to have strong units. You can't make Pirate Works with only one stars. You will lose a lot of life. And you might not get any gold from it. And it's kind of hard to transition into other builds. So only do Pirates if you're ahead. Or you can get a lot of them. Anyways, I feel like I'm rambling at this point. I hope... You guys learned something from this video. I know I stacked a lot of information on top of each other. Um, I just wanted to go through what I'm thinking of when I'm playing around. And uh, yeah, I'm sorry, this is my first guide. It's probably not very good. But uh, in the future, I'm gonna try and uh, uh, take the guide into bite-sized uh, bite chunks and uh, just make it more accessible for you guys and try and teach you
Because I personally fucking love this game. I think it's great. It's by far the best auto battler on the scene right now. And I'm sure you guys will have an absolute blast when the uh, game actually comes out uh, in a couple of days. I think it comes out, uh, let's see here, in about two, three days. So, yeah. Anyways. Thank you so much for watching. If you want to check out more of my gameplay, you can check me out on Twitch when I'm streaming this game pretty much all the fucking time right now. Well, except for when I'm at possession over 9,000 for five more hours. Woohoo! But yeah. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching. I hope you guys have a wonderful day. Don't forget to subscribe and like if you actually like the video. And if you have any comments or questions, please post them down. I always read all the comments. I might not answer all of them, but I always read them. Uh, so, uh, schönen Tag und uh, sehen euch wieder. Tschüssi für now. Later.